key word there to represent k times, what is that? Yeah, so we're, we're talking about direct. So very directly, we know we're doing y equals k times x. That's good. So on the left-hand side of the room, what's our next step? What do you think? Sure. How much is x in our case? Sure. And how much is y? So let's go ahead and substitute those in. Go ahead and do that on your own and solve for k. I'm try to solve the case of the missing sign in sheet. Did you guys know the sign in sheet? Yeah. <laughs> you You're the man. Send him to jail. You're going to math jail. <laughs> it's a wonderful place full of equations. All right. Well, I'm glad you remember. <laughs> Okay, let's see what happens here. So we know we have to substitute in. That's why the second sentence is even there, to give us some numbers to allow us to solve for k. So when we're dealing with direct or even inverse variation in just a little while, we're going to have one of these equations, either y equals k times x, or in the future will y equals k over x. The problem is going to give you two numbers to plug in. Since we have those three variables up there, they have to give you two of them to solve for the missing one. In our case, they give us y, which is 20. Do we know what x equals? Yeah. Really? No. I'm oh, sorry, k. Do we know what k equals? No, no. no, not so much. We do know what x equals. That's going to be 15. How are we going to solve for k in our problem here? Sure. By what? Okay. So, of course, our 15s on the right-hand side, they create that 1 for us, and we're left with k. On the left-hand side, what are we going to have? Yeah, good. So we are reducing this as well. Are we done? No. We're almost done. We've done the hard part. We've solved for k. However, what I told you last time is that we want to rewrite the equation because that's going to allow us to solve for any other pieces of information that we might need to find. So tell me exactly what I need to have once I resubstitute in k. What am I going to get now? Good. So essentially, we're just changing this by replacing k with what we know k to be. Would you raise your hand feel okay with this direct variation? Would you like to see how this is applied to like a real life situation? Yeah. Yeah. So we're like, nah, not so much. <laughs> By the way, the answer to that question is always, yes, Mr. Leonard. We're so excited to see. That's the answer. So are you guys ready to see how this is going to be applied to this? Yeah. Oh, good. We're so excited. Uh, and the rest of it, we're so excited. We're okay, so excited. Good. I'm so sure you are. Okay, so <laughs> let's suppose we had this situation. From the ceiling, I'm going to hang a spring. Okay, so like a, like, a, like a scale, basically. So some sort of spring from the ceiling. And I'm going to put some weight on the spring. What's going to happen to the spring? Probably gonna, it's not going to go up, is it? It's going to go probably stretch down a little bit. Let's say that I take that weight off and I put a heavier weight on. What's going to happen to that spring? It's going to go even more. So would you agree that for a certain stretch of the spring, now eventually that spring is going to stretch all the way to its maximum and not go any further, right? But for a certain distance, the more weight we put on that spring, the more it's going to stretch. Do you agree? Does that fall into the category of direct variation? Yeah. More weight equals more stretch. So those things are tied together. Less weight means less stretch. So we know that as the weight goes up, the stretch goes up. Let's see if we can write out a word problem, identify that it's direct variation, see if we can solve some things about it. So let's suppose that... The distance a string, a spring stretch, that's going to be a tongue twister the whole day. The distance a spring stretches is directly proportional to the weight that's attached to it.
wait a minute, directly proportional. What's that mean? What's directly proportional mean? What's the key word in directly proportional? Directly. That's it. It's the same thing as varies directly. So that's a different way to say varies directly or directly proportional. It's the key word is really direct in this case, okay? So even if you see directly proportional, we mean varies directly. It means so the distance of a spring stretches is directly proportional to the weight attached. That tells you what equation you're going to set up. Okay, the second sentence is going to tell you some numbers to plug in. The third sentence is going to tell you what to do with those numbers. So right now I'm going to take a break. I'll write more of this problem out in just a second. But I want to make sure we're understanding how to set up the equation in this case. Now, I told you let, last time in the five minutes we really talked about this, that we don't always have to have y and x. y and x are kind of some dummy variables. The idea is if y varies directly as x, y comes first and x comes second. In our case over here, the distance the spring stretches is directly proportional to the weight attached. I don't have an x and a y. What are my two variables that I'm talking about here? The dis Okay, the distance the spring is stretching, that's great. So this is one of them. And what's it proportional or directly proportional to? So weight's another one. So maybe we don't have y and x. Maybe we have what variables do you want to use? Yeah, original, right? D for, for distance and W for weight. So how are we going to write out the equation if we don't have y and x anymore? We have D and W. Can you tell me? D equals K times W. Sure. Why, ladies and gentlemen, is it D equals K times? What's that K times coming from? What word clues you into that? Directly. Good. Okay, so D for distance, that's the first thing that we, we saw in our sentence. So dr distance is very directly. That means distance equals K times well, what are the weight we're going to put on that thing? So that's our first part to our problem here. We need to identify that equation we're working with. Now I'm going to fill in the rest of our... I'm going to move this down a little bit also. Fill in the rest of our, our question. So D equals K times W. We got that from our very first sentence. Then it has to give you some information. Let's say a 56-pound weight on this spring stretches at 8 inches. Well, that tells you some pretty good information. Can you please tell me where's the 56 going to go in the equation we just made up? Yeah, why? Okay. And where's the 8 going to go? So we could actually substitute in our 56 and our 8 for the equation we just made up. If a 56-pound weight stretches that thing 8 inches, the distance it's stretching is, well, it's 8. We don't know what k is. That's really part of this problem times 56. I'd like to see if you, you understand what we're talking about here. Not your head if you're okay getting from this point to this point. Yes, good, okay. What do we need to do to solve for k? Divide, Divide by what? 8 or 56? Look where your k is at. We need to get k by itself. What's attached to the k? Okay, so we're dividing by 56 in our case. Wait a second. Wait a second. 8 over 56, is that even possible? Yes, you can say. It's not going to be a whole number. That's fine. We don't have to have a whole number up here. What is 8 over 56? 17. Sure. We're going to simplify that fraction. We're going to get 1 7. There's nothing that says k has to be integer or a whole number. What it, what it says is that k is being multiplied by x if it's directly proportional or very directly. So in our case, we get 1 7 k equals k. 1 7 equals k. OK. We should be good at this at this point. What do we do now? All right. So when we do that, the D is not going to change. I know all that's changing is that K. So D equals, instead of K, I'll do the 1 7th, that's what we just found, times W.
Now, this allows you to solve for any other piece of information I want. So if I say, instead of a 56 pound weight, I want you to go ahead and put on, what would I have down here, an 85 pound weight. Could you figure out how much that stretches? What are you going to plug the 85 into? That's the, that's the new way. So the idea is this. We use our first sentence or the, the thing that says very directly or directly proportional or in the future inversely proportional or varies inversely to set up our equation. The next sentence is going to give us two pieces of information. That lets you solve for your k. Once you solve for your k, that's setting you up, setting you up with a very nice equation you can use to solve for any other piece of information. So when I do this next part, how far will an 85 pound weight stretch this spring? We can figure that out. By the way, uh, just one more time. Where's the 85 go? Does 85 go for the D or for the W? w. Yeah, it's definitely a weight. So let's plug that in. I have D equals 1 7th times our 85. 1 7th times 85? Well, 1 7th doesn't really, or 7th really doesn't divide the 85 evenly, does it? Okay. So we can write the distance equals 85 over 7. 85 over 7 what, though? What are we talking about here? So make sure we're using our, our units correctly. This isn't stretching feet or anything, right? It's definitely not stretching miles. It's stretching inches. 85 or 7 inches, or if you want to use your calculator to get a decimal, because typically you're not going to go, oh, yeah, I just traveled 85 over 7 inches. Do you do that? I'm traveling uh, 85 over 13 miles per hour, officer. That's how fast I was going, honestly. That doesn't make sense. So maybe translate this into a decimal for a real-life situation. Do you have that down? Yeah, 12.14. Okay. So it's stretched at 12.14 inches. Hey, one more question. If I did this another way, let's say I asked you, what weight would it take to stretch the spring 15 inches? Could you do that? Where would you plug in the 15? And then we just multiply by 7 on both sides, and that would give us the weight that we would need to solve or to find a, a certain distance of stretch. Would you raise your hand feel okay with this problem, setting up the direct variation? Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. We got direct variation. Direct means as one thing goes up, another thing goes up. As the weight goes up, the stretch goes up. There is another type of variation we have to talk about, though. Specifically, we're going to talk about inverse variation. Hey, what do you suppose inverse variation means since we just talked about direct variation? Yeah, it's the opposite. If one thing goes up, the other thing goes down. For instance, this always happens to me. Well, <laughs> this always happens to me, but most of the time this happens to me. If I spend more time in a casino, I have less what? Money. Yeah, I have way less money. And actually have less fun, too, because I have less money. So the more time you spend there, the less money you have. Right? The, the farther or the longer you drive.